um, Taoiseach, I think it's important to take this opportunity to bring a bit of balance into the discussions around the visit of the US President and his wife, given the almost unprecedented slobbering over them that the nation has been exposed to over the last number of days. And it's really hard to know which is worse, whether it's the outpourings of the Obamas themselves or the sycophantic fawning over them by sections of the media and the political establishment. We've had separate and special news bulletins by the state broadcaster to tell us what Michelle Obama and her daughters had for lunch in Dublin, but very little questioning of the fact that she was having lunch with Mr. Tax Exile himself. Uh, we had very little challenging of the fact that she's glad to be home, home a country that she's been in less than a week and that her husband has very tenuous links in. And of course, the biggest irony of all, the protestations of Obama himself in his speech to the children in Northern Ireland about peace. When he said, those who choose a path of peace, I promise you that the United States of America will support you every step of the way. We will be the wind at your back. Now I ask you, is this person going for the hypocrite of the century award? Because we have to call things by their right names. And the reality is that by any serious examination, this man is a war criminal. He has just announced his decision to supply arms to the Syrian opposition, including the jihadists, fueling the destabilization of that region and continuing to undermine secularism and knock back conditions for women. This is the man who is in essence stalling the Geneva peace talks by trying to broker enhanced leverage for the Syrian opposition by giving them arms and to hell with the thousands more who lose their lives or the tens of thousands more who will be displaced as this war goes on. This is the man who has facilitated a 200% increase in the use of drones which have killed thousands of people including hundreds of children. And you Taoiseach, you are the one who's turned a blind eye on these activities. You've talked about the G8 being an opportunity to showcase Ireland. But is it not a reality that you have showcased us as a nation of pimps prostituting ourselves in return for a pat on the head? Debbie. To be honest with you, we were really speculating this morning whether you were going to deck the cabinet out in leprechaun hats decorated with a bit of stars and stripes Debbie. to really mark Debbie. abject humiliation here. My question you. to you, Taoiseach, is as follows. What steps are you going to take to follow in the correct statements and the correct decision of your colleague Tanishta Eamon Gilmore, who voted against the lifting of the arms embargo in relation to Syria? What steps are you going to take to ensure that no weapons for Syria are going to go through Shannon in breach of our international laws Thank on you, neutrality? Debbie. What steps are you going to take to showcase this country, not as a lapdog of US imperialism, but as an independent nation with an independent foreign policy, which takes a lead in international Debbie. diplomacy to outlaw the use of drones, the favourite method of extermination of your friend, Mr. Thank Obama. You. On the Taoiseach. Right, please. Well, let me, let me confirm to you, first of all, that the President was not inquiring about your whereabouts or your well-being. I think your comments are disgraceful. I think they do down the pride of Irish people all over the world, who are more than happy to see this island um, be a host to the G8, the leaders of the most industrialised nations in the world. And for you, Deputy Daly, to stand up here and criticise the American president for giving a continuation of support for a fragile peace process in Northern Ireland, where over 3,000 people lost their lives over 30 years, is a disgraceful do-down. And if you, represent, if you represent those people on the back, on the back line over there, if that's the kind of comment that you intend to make, well, then it's, it's, it's beneath you, actually. Even, even those of your predecessors in their, in their brilliance never matched what you've just said here. Let me remind you, let me remind you that the communities in Northern Ireland and the politicians from administrations on this, uh, on the, in this house here, of all governments, together with British governments and Northern Ireland politicians and Northern Ireland communities, have put together a very fragile peace 
And far be it from you to come in here and criticize somebody who wants to support that process, visibly, personally, uh, and with assistance from the United States, where 35 million Irish Americans, Deputy Daly, want this peace process to continue. And the young lady, the young student, who introduced the president in Belfast, put her finger on it very well when she said, the reality is that Northern Ireland has had a past, and the reality is that Northern Ireland has a future. And that future, Deputy Daly, is one where peace in communities and across communities should abound. And it's beneath you to, um, to say that the American president uh, should not be a party to keeping that process alive and visible. Insofar as, insofar as the discussion on Syria is concerned, there was a serious discussion at the, uh, at the G8 summit with the members of the G8 themselves. Um, I'm not sure whether you favour uh, the Russian intervention here uh, or whether you favour what the European Union uh, put forward while there was division among the countries in Europe about the lifting of the arms embargo. Ireland took a very clear position on this, which was articulated by the Thánaiste, that the embargo should not be lifted. But the conclusion of the G8 summit was that the Geneva peace talks should take place. Nobody wants to see wanton slaughter and the exodus of hundreds of thousands of people from Syria. Um, and, and, and far from, far from, um, far from a warmongering um, discussion, the situation here is what can you do to bring about discussions and negotiations that will restore, in the first instance, uh, peace to this situation, and in the second instance, a structure that will allow Syria uh, to continue in the time ahead without the obscenities and the humanitarian crisis that we've witnessed in the last two years. Mark, Deputy Daly, one minute. So, please, please. Yeah. One minute, Deputy. Thanks, Kian Corla. Of course, I said nothing about the Northern Ireland peace process, a process which everybody supports, but is not one that gives you a license to do whatever you like anywhere else around the globe. There isn't much peace in Iraq where 26 people lost their lives yesterday. There isn't much peace in Afghanistan. There isn't much peace in Pakistan. And there certainly isn't much peace in Syria. And the side I'm on in Syria is the one, and I, what I agree with, is the statement by Oxfam, where Ox, Oxfam said, sending arms to the Syrian opposition won't create a level playing field. Instead, it further risks fueling an arms free-for-all, where the victims are the civilians of Syria. Our experience tells us that the crisis will only drag on for longer if arms are poured in. And that's in essence what the Americans have done here. I can only take from your non-answer to the question that you were asked is that you're going to take no steps to ensure that those arms will not be sent through Shannon in breach of our neutrality. You said here last week no arms ever came through Shannon. How do you know that, seeing as no investigations take place? The reality is in 2012, 548 US planes landed in Shannon. How do you know what was on them if you haven't examined them? Your Minister for Transport revealed uh, in a parliamentary question that 239 civilian planes landed in Shannon, where they sought permission because they were carrying munici munitions of war or dangerous goods on a civilian aircraft. What steps are you going to take to intervene in this situation? And the last point I'll make is that People in this country are very fond of our American brothers and sisters, and I think we stand far more shoulder to shoulder with them by making valid criticisms of their president, who has broken his election promises, rather than just pimping this nation as a tax haven for their corporations. I'm sure the Americans would far prefer if their multinationals paid their taxes at home rather than offshore here so they could develop their health care, so they wouldn't be wasting money on arms being sent to slow or people in other countries. Thank you, Deputy. The final reply, Taoiseach. As you're aware, 100,000 American people are employed by Irish-owned firms across 50 states, and something similar here from American-invested corporates in this country. The American government, and I don't speak for them, obviously, have taken the view in terms of withdrawal of their troops from Afghanistan and from Iraq. There wasn't any intervention in terms of troops in Libya, and uh, there hasn't been any intervention in terms of troops in Syria. Um, I, 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 we've never supported rendition flights through Shannon, and it, it ill behoves you to make comments that are not true.
Um, now, I think, I think, I, I, I think uh, under the middle of all that rant, uh, you seem to support the government position here, which is articulated by the Thonisht uh, at, uh, at the Minister of Foreign Affairs, that this country did not support and does not support the lifting of the arms embargo uh, in Syria. Because clearly, with a, with a multi-opposition, uh, multi, um, uh, very diverse factions in that opposition, uh, these are very vexed questions. Um, so the decision of the European Council uh, to not agree in terms of the, in terms of the embargo um, means that that opportunity presents itself. But everybody at the G8, as I understand it, was focused on, uh, on getting the peace talks in Geneva underway, uh, which might bring about some sense of solution here. Um, clearly, you haven't condemned the uh, Iranians or the Hezbollah for, or the Russians for supplying arms to the Assad regime. Uh, you haven't commented upon, upon the atrocities carried out under President Assad in Syria uh, at all. Um, you, seem, you seem to have a very biased view about the wanton slaughter of the Syrian people. Um, and everybody, everybody on this side, insofar as we're party to the European Union, wants to see uh, a structure that would bring about the removal of um, President Assad, but peace restored to, the, to, those, uh, to that country and its troubled people, and the hundreds of thousands who have had to exit us across the border uh, with nothing uh, but, their, but their families and a few belongings with them. So, in that sense, uh, Deputy Daly, I hope, and it's the hope of the government, uh, that the peace talks in Geneva can actually take place and that something comes from them. And while I wasn't at the discussion about Syria at the G8, my understanding is that there was a very frank um, uh, disclosure about the various views here and that hopefully something beneficial will come from that. Um, that's the answer to your question.